What is repentance? And does it matter? I want to clear up some confusion about a subject that can be controversial. I've had people label me as a false teacher because I mentioned the word repentance. Is repentance in the Bible? Is it necessary for salvation? What does repentance even mean? I want to share with you a couple of different verses and settle this matter. Help us to understand what the Bible says about repentance and to understand whether or not it's something that we should be concerned about. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, in verse number 3, it says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? There's going to be those that ridicule and mock believers who say Jesus is coming back, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? But then we find an answer in verse number 9, where it says, The Lord is not slack or lazy concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Why? Why has he withheld his coming so far? But is long-suffering or patient to usward, not willing that any should perish. Okay, talking about the unsaved, those that have not yet trusted in Jesus as their Savior. He's not willing that any should perish but desiring that all should come to repentance. This is important, okay? Oftentimes, when we trust in Jesus as our Savior, when we make that decision to believe on him in his death, burial, and resurrection, oftentimes that is expressed through a prayer. But here, it doesn't say that he's not willing that any should perish, but desiring that all should pray a prayer. He says he's desiring that all should come to repentance. Now, oftentimes the idea of repentance is expressed through a prayer, but repentance is an important part of coming to Jesus. Repentance is an important part. It's kind of like the other side of the coin of faith. The Bible says in the book of Acts, testifying to the Jews and to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, two sides of the same coin. Well, what is repentance then? Does it mean that you need to clean up your life, that you need to, you know, make yourself palatable to Jesus so that you can come to him and put faith in him? That's not what repentance means. Does it mean that you need to stop sinning? Like, if you mess up one time, then your repentance wasn't genuine. That's not what it means either. The word repentance in the Greek literally means to change one's mind, to change your thinking. Now, repentance is an important thing. In Luke chapter 13, I want to share with you some important things that Jesus says about repentance. He says in verse 2 of Luke 13, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. There was great persecution to the Galileans in Jesus' day. And he says, I tell you, nay, no. They didn't suffer all these things because they were so incredibly great sinners above everybody else. Jesus says, no, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Jesus says repentance is an important thing. When Jesus began his preaching ministry, the very first words out of his mouth were, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And then in verse number four, Jesus says, or or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell, there was a tower that fell, killed 18 people. And Jesus is talking about it. And he says, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Repentance means to change your mind, but to change your mind about what? Specifically, to change your mind about your sin, to change your mind about your status before God. Think if you ever had a relationship with somebody and you had a fight, you had an argument. Maybe you have a brother or sister, and when you were kids, they stole your toy, and so maybe you slapped him across the face or something like that. There has to come a point for both parties, because both parties did something wrong. There has to come a point of repentance, changing your mind about what you did, realizing it's wrong. And that realization that you had done wrong points you, drives you 
to apologize. That is biblical repentance. God, the Bible calls it godly sorrow. Godly sorrow leadeth to repentance, meaning you recognize that you had done wrong. You recognize your sinfulness and deserving of judgment before a holy God. And you run to Jesus for forgiveness of that thing. That is biblical repentance, a change of mind about your sin. This is illustrated perfectly in a parable that Jesus gives in Luke chapter 15. Before he gives the parable, though, he gives two other illustrations. He says in verse 4, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. When he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you likewise, and listen to this, likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. This is important. We can't erase the doctrine of repentance, the teaching of repentance from the scripture. It's embedded in the teachings of Christ. There's going to be joy in heaven over one sinner that repents, he says, comes to themselves about their sin, recognizing from God's point of view how God views their sin, that it's wicked, unjust, and deserving of judgment. Then that drives that sinner to put their faith in Jesus. Two sides of the same coin. A change of mind about your sin leads to falling on the mercy of God and what Jesus did on the cross to be your only hope for salvation. Likewise, there's joy in heaven over one sinner that repents, he says. Then he also talks about a woman who's searching for a piece of silver, and she, she diligently seeks until she finds it. When she hath found it, in verse 9, he says, She calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Repentance is important. Now we get to the parable where this is illustrated. Many know it as the story of the prodigal son. It says there was a certain man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided to them his living. The father gave the inheritance to both sons, the older son who stayed there and the younger son who ran off. Okay? He, he divided his inheritance to both of them. The younger son runs off, not many days after the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there he wasted his substance with riotous living. He spent all of his father's inheritance on wickedness. Then it says, when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. He found himself lacking. Hey, he, he had nothing, and he was in need, the Bible says. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and sent him to his fields to feed swine. Swine was an unclean animal to the Jews. And so this citizen of this country that the younger son joins himself to in order to have something to eat, the citizen sends the younger son into the fields where the pigs are to feed them. And the Bible says in verse 16, he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. He, he, would, have, he would have eaten the pig's food. He was so hungry. And no man gave unto him. And then in verse 17, in the midst of all this, finding himself in, in the same area that the pigs are, desiring to eat their food because he had so little, the Bible says he came to himself. He had a realization about what he had done. This is repentance illustrated. Look at what happens. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. This is Repentance Illustrated. It's having a change of mind about what you've done that drives you to confess, to apologize, okay, and to ask for forgiveness. Repentance and faith. Two sides of the same coin. And he says, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. You're realizing that you have nothing to offer. 
you're realizing that you're lost and undone and wicked before God and in need of restoration that only comes from the Father granting you forgiveness based on what the Son did for you in dying and rising again. And the Bible says, when he arose, he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. This is repentance. It's a change of mind about your sin. It's recognizing your sinfulness. A recognition of doing wrong that drives you to apologize and ask for forgiveness. Now, as believers, we aren't perfect. If you've trusted Jesus as your Savior, your repentance isn't done, okay? If you trusted Jesus as your Savior, you are secure in Christ. The Bible says you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. We can't lose our salvation. I don't believe we can walk away from it. The Bible says no man is able to pluck us out of his Father's hand. We're secure, but we can lose our fellowship with the Lord if we have unconfessed sin as believers in our heart and life. The life of a believer is not characterized by sinlessness necessarily, although as we grow in Christ, we should be sinning less and less. The life of a believer should be characterized by repentance and faith. Even though we're saved, even though the Bible says in Ephesians that we're seated in heavenly places in Christ, our salvation is secure. Even though we're saved, we still have to live in this sinful world, in this sinful flesh, deal with this sinful nature. And the Bible says the Spirit of God wars, battles against our flesh. And there is a constant need when we encounter temptation, when we fail, when we fall, there's a constant need for repentance and restoration. Like in 1 John 1, 9, where it says, if we confess our sins, believers, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to have that fellowship with God restored. And so I hope that helps clear up some things about what repentance is in the Bible. In the Old Testament, it's the word teshuva, which literally means to turn around. You're going towards sin, you turn around, you run to God for forgiveness and salvation, recognizing what you did was wrong. In the New Testament, the word means a change of mind. Changing your mind about your sin. That's why repentance is an important thing. And a correct understanding of it will help us to know that it is part of salvation. Not cleaning up our life, not working for salvation, but simply recognizing our sin, which is the first step to drive us to come to Christ in faith.